very close now. A few, few cafes. There's the migration, migration centre there. Yeah. <laughs> Bloody Nora, there's another one. <laughs> you see, I've always said, once you let one in, they'll all come in and take the country. See, very multicultural country uh, and a very multicultural area. I've had my few drinks. <laughs> I don't know why, but I'm seeing them everywhere now. <laughs> anyway, it's closed. <laughs> I had a brain freeze. It's a, oh, you could call it a brain freeze. It's something else, actually. It's not really a brain freeze. It's more like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, make up a new name so it, it revolves on the internet and everybody knows. Let's make up a new name, like a brain whoosh. Like, so I had a brain whoosh, right? Like, your brain starts working. And I thought this, like, think about it. Thank you for keeping up to date with the series. Okay, so um, I've just had a look at um, the, uh, the pubs in the last episode. Just wanted to let you know that um, the first um, pub that we visited, just to, just to bring you up to date and to give you some history, was the Kiri Hotel. And that's uh, one of the biggest, uh, like one of the main um, uh, hotels in in the Auburn area, in the main area of Auburn. Um, so it was actually um, someone by the name of uh, Gregory Keary uh, that was a licensee, uh, and around about 1920, and up until 1930, when he built his own hotel in the corner of Rawson Street and Station Streets around 1932. So that building that you saw there around about 1932, known as Kiri Hotel. And um, and that Auburn Hotel, that particular one, has, had been a main um, local bar for the lo uh, local community. Uh, so they've been there for, uh, for, you know, since 19, about 1930, thereabouts. Um, they, they, they had a few renovations. When I did, when I did see, um, uh, management there they uh, they did go through um, their computer system to to um, to give me some details on some changes that they did in the past um, the a new um, owner recently so they've had a few ch handovers of um, owners and um, a few renovations and some recent renovations as well and there's some images I can show you of um, how it looked in the past uh, my actual thoughts on whether uh, Love Thy Neighbour was recorded at that place. And, and um, to, to this day, to be honest, I'm looking at it and it looks very identical to uh, what, what, what we're seeing in Love Thy Neighbour. But when, when you actually look, in, look into it and, and look at where the stairs were located and so forth, um, it looks to me that, that you know, um, they, wouldn't, they, they wouldn't have had, I don't think they would have had a renovation like that. So I did some I did some deeper work in that same episode. I went to a place called the Auburn Hotel, which I thought, look, this is going to be the place. This has got to be it. So I went to the Auburn Hotel, which was the next place, and uh, that hotel, um, local significance for its historic, uh, social and representative its heritage values, like it's it's quite well known. It's in the main strip of Auburn. Uh, the building uh, is linked to the commercial and residential development uh, that Auburn experienced around the 1920s and again in the 1960s, very popular. The Auburn Hotel is likely of social significance to the local community as a popular place of gathering and meeting. Uh, this is demonstrated through its continued use. The building is of high value. This is demonstrated through the retention of much of the original fabric and detailing and enhanced by the remnant federation features, art deco motifs and prominent corner location within the urban landscape. The building is historically linked to the commercial and residential development that Auburn experienced in the 1920s and again in the 1960s. The original Auburn Hotel was built in 1914 and partially demolished and rebuilt in 1969. 
The Auburn Hotel is also associated with Gregory Keary, who was the licensee of the hotel by 1920. Uh, and, and up, up until 1930 when he built his own hotel, Kiri Hotel. So they're linked. Now there's another one I found and that was the third one. So we went to the Melton Hotel, not directly linked, but this is a, this is an older pub. And we're looking at 1877, whether this is correct, um, uh, that's, um, you know, um, this is information that I'm reading. In 80, 1877, a former jockey, Fred Martinier, became the licensee of the Melton Hotel and held that position for over 30 years. Uh, so uh, this is very interesting. You can see all this information um, on the websites there and um, you can see how they've gone through the changes over the years. Um, you can see the images, you can see maps as well. So it's quite interesting. You can see that um, they give you the information on the type of people that um, would locally visit the pubs. Uh, so the Melton pub has been through uh, a lot of repair work um, and some recent work as, you, as we saw. Uh, when they had their renovation. Very, I found it quite interesting. Um, but when I looked at the Melton um, Hotel, which is on Melton Street, just off the Parramatta Road, which is one of the longest roads in Australia, I believe it's one of the longest roads. Um, that one, and I also found that um, the uh, Auburn Hotel it, it didn't it didn't link with me it didn't it didn't give me an idea that um love thy neighbor in australia was recorded um w within that area love thy neighbor walk up and say how be ya. gee but i'm glad to see a pal house tricks what's new love thy neighbor and you will find your labor a great deal easier life will be breezier if you love thy neighbor what i mean is it might not look like much on the outside but on the outside but on the inside good Open damage. That's our entry. That's, that's the hotel entry in there. We came through a different entry. And I just showed you from afar. I just showed you from afar. It's... Okay, okay. This building's old. I love these tiny places. What's that garage? It's probably where they keep all the beer. Oh. Okay. Oh. That's Parameter Road. No way. No, I can't go in there. It's quite new. They're, they're going through some renovations. This year, this year I've not seen that many renovations in my lifetime. Not in my lifetime this year, no. All these places are doing renovations. They've got money. They're putting money into all these things. Amazing. Look, this this place is. Well. Now this building's been here for a long time. Let's take you through it again.
it is a schooner. Now, is it, that's good though. You know, you've got this new um, owner that wants to make some changes. The smell of fresh paint. It's good. It's uh, really relaxing, and when this, I don't think this is open yet here. Let's try it. Oh, it's not open now. That looks good. That's good. Yeah, that staircase. That staircase. I'll, I'll take you if you're here quickly. Um, looking at that green kind of green background I would have thought it looked probably looked like the workers club in Blacktown or the Auburn RSL club I looked deeper I looked deeper and I have found some more I, I, I did, just, did some more searches and I looked, I did look into it further and tried to, I did try to find, look, I had the video of the, um, of the, um, Auburn RSL, it's already demolished. So what I was look, doing was looking for any, any other videos, like, for example, prior to demolition. And I've actually come up with something here. So, um, there's some people that I really need to thank for, because uh, I've I'd found these, not just, these are not pictures or images. This is a video recording. So let me show you this video recording. It's really important. And I find that when I looked at this video, I thought that there's no way um, these pub scenes of Love Thy Neighbour in Australia were recorded at the Melton Hotel or Auburn Hotel or Kerry Hotel. I'm pretty sure, I'm 100% sure this was recorded at the Auburn RSL Club. So let me take you through to what's of real significance here is the actual bar, which uh, I believe is most likely the bar that they used on the, the Love Thy Neighbour in Australia series. I'm talking about the Australian version, by the way, and not the UK version. And let me take you through to an area where our YouTuber, Abandoned Angel, uh, and it's, yeah, thanks to Abandoned Angel that uh, she produced this um, approximately 30 minute video of, she, like, she took you th right through to the, um, main area of the Auburn RSL club and she also took you upstairs even and and the stairs I mean that that place was probably not fit for uh, somebody to go in it's uh, like a brave job to do something like this look at the paintwork and look at how our presenter here and what I'm, I'm telling you what a brave presenter she is 
I don't know how she got how could she could get access to it and she's really brave to do this. She she went in there into the building and she showed you prior to the demolition the mess this was in. I uh, I was astonished just to see a video there with so much rubbish everywhere the the things that have just been left is just I, I i just i'm just lost for words that is really i can't believe that um a building like that the the greatest one of the great buildings there that that has been there for a long time the Auburn RSL club uh from memory and for from reading this week also around about 1962 or in the early 60s this was this was built so the exact time i'm not sure but um, I'm reading on, on the internet now, it's, it had been built around the early 60s or maybe 1962 for the local community. So it catered, you know, for the usual, the, 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 the people within the area, um, uh, food, beverage, um, bands, you can see there. Look at the rooms. That video, I'm actually going to put in a link there so you can actually have a look at that video because I think it's uh, got some vital information and clues as to where uh, we're looking at the recording of um, of where they these you know um, these cast members were drinking so I'm pretty sure it's in that area and the the real clues are the real clues that um, made me think look this has got to be it is are the steps so if you're looking at the steps not the long flight of steps but one two three three or four steps that go around a corner and there's the toilets and also there's um, the bar so it's kind of in a small area but um, well, I do have some idea, and I'm pretty sure that this is actually recorded at the Auburn RSL Club. But of course, on the actual video, it does say South Auburn, uh, but that's that's just something that they made up on the board. But it looks like, I believe it was recorded at the Auburn RSL Club. Very interesting uh, video, and the footage is, is quite amazing to to me. Just to look at this, 30 minute video and and I'm like how can someone leave a club an RSL club like this in you know in tatters and a mess it really is crazy for to you know and thinking what they're what they will do to that place and of course the result was um, the last few episodes ridiculous this is the kind of world we're living in um, but uh, what can you do? It's just what what's happening now is all well, the buildings going up everywhere, as I said. Oh look, I've got to go through there. Wonderful. <clears throat> As you can see, the place is uh, well and truly trashed.
stretch Whoa. Now, what if I said to you that I believe the Orbanara Cell Club was run down that much? Possibility that it was run down that much. And at the time, uh, during their most during the most busiest of times they probably were that busy that they may not have had time for too many renovations um, and you know fixtures and um, uh, you know like fixing the building you know issues uh, so whether that was a um, I don't, I'm not sure. That's not 100%. Don't take that from me. But it's it's a possibility that they were so busy uh, during those years uh, that it was probably hard to undergo, undergo the, all these renovations and things. And it could have resulted uh, in the, um, the issues of the building. So that's a possibility. But that is don't take that from me it's just my these are my thoughts it's a poss it's possible that they couldn't go through all these renovations because they had the buffet it was so busy there were a lot of people coming through um they had bands on they had, you know they had a it looks like they had a show stage there so there was a lot going on you can imagine the amount of people there and all the um uh, all the uh you know, just the busyness of the place. Be I mean, busyness. <laughs> I mean, the p amount of people that would have, would have come through. Like the, the fairly large car park that probably would have been there, that was there. Um, so, you know, and after those sad times when you see that building just sitting there, not doing anything, um, there would have been people there, you know, living around the area and watching that demolition it's, and the sounds of the demolition it's like a carry-on movie to you know looks like somebody going on holiday and and uh listening to all that racket and noise in the morning seven o'clock in the morning oh my god can you imagine all the stuff going on it's so sad uh that the urban rsl club has gone and we hope that that's um the end of it and no more you know, um, no more of these uh, buildings, abandoned buildings, because it's it's really sad. In the conditions the club was in, it was probably not fit for someone to um, to uh, to go in there. I, I mean, if it was still there, like I said, I would have done it. And I can tell you this now. That I believe when I recorded episode two, one and two, on one of those first episodes, I drove through the area and the building was still there. So the the demolish uh, the demolishing period of uh, the Auburn RSL Club would have been um, the beginning, I believe, of twenty twenty three maybe January, February, around about that time. So that would have been somewhere between the first and second episodes. And I'm positive that I did drive around the area and it was still there. I'm pretty sure I did because I remember the big fence. I was driving around Auburn and I saw the fence going all the way down the street. And um, like when I'm looking at it at, on those last few episodes, it's not recognisable now. I, I couldn't recognise it. And 
it's just amazing to see that there's just all rubble there sitting there. But when you if you look at this video by Abandoned Angel, and she does specialise in these type of videos where uh, you can see all these places that are pr pretty much abandoned. Uh, uh, like prior to demolition and um, these places have just been sitting there doing nothing just rotting and um, it's, it is quite amazing to see these things and to actually look into these places where uh, people have been you know drinking and um, going to for so many years it's it is amazing and it, and also it is sad to see uh, these buildings in these conditions and um, the memories that can come from them are quite amazing. I do recall the buffet area in which I visited um, somewhere between 2003 and 2007 once or twice and that was it. Uh, so I do recall um, the, and the main area, you know, you you know where you sign in and everything. I do remember, and walking up the stairs, uh, possibly walking up the stairs for the buffet, uh, whether it was on the ground floor at the time, I, I just can't recall. But I do recall those stairs, and um, uh, and that's the long staircase. I mean, but there's a short staircase on that video as well. So if I show you the video. If I show you the footage of the video of um, the abandoned building and the video of Love Thy Neighbour, um, I can try and put it together. So I really hope you enjoy these videos. And if you can uh, spread these to your the people that know Love Thy Neighbour or were fans of Love Thy Neighbour, that would be awesome. Um, and even in the UK, I know... I really do know this, and I know from what people have said in the UK that um, after seeing Love Thy Neighbour for so many years in the UK, um, they've seen footages or they've seen episodes of Love Thy Neighbour in Australia and they didn't like it. I, I do disagree, because uh, there are only seven episodes and that, that doesn't matter, but the seven episodes, um, I think they represent something. And especially when you've had those different characters on there, uh, they were really, uh, I, f I found it a really real good um, laugh. So um, besides having the original Love Thy Neighbour in the UK uh, with um, the, um, the Strangers Next Door, uh, this is uh, another type of Love Thy Neighbour, which is an Australian um, edition, uh, which is even more funny. Have a look, because this is what we're doing. We're trying to look at the, um, the differences here, trying to find out uh, uh, this week, what I've been doing is trying to find out the, um, the actual location of the, uh, of the bar recordings, where, where they recorded them, and uh, possibly they've done it in a location uh, where the film crew decided let's go to a location which is close and um, which is not really busy. And this is, you know, the Auburn RSL Club during the daytime, it probably wouldn't have been a busy time. Um, Workers Club is different. I've looked at these other places. Workers Club in Blacktown is, if they ever did do it there, and that's something uh, that is, I'm unsure about. Whether they did record it there, I'm unsure. Uh, but I, I can recall there's an area uh, where there was a bar and there was a, a, a men's toilet next to it and most likely a few steps, but that was going back before they've done a renovation this year this last year or the year before they've done a massive renovation i did make a phone call to the workers club and i spoke to someone uh looks sounds like from, she was from the uk and lived here for so many years and um i just asked her the question you know have you had a renovation she said yes so the renovation did take place 
around 2020. Uh, so during that time, 2020, 2021, it was a massive renovation. It, it cost millions of dollars to get this place renovated. So I'm thinking, oh no, this whole place is completely different to what I recall. So uh, the place I do recall is somewhere in the um, area where there were um, poker machines. So there were poker machines within the area um, and there was also the the bar uh, the toilet area within close range and that's why I thought look, this could well have been recorded there if they didn't use the Auburn RSL club this is one of the two and it was very hard it and the thing is it's a difficult thought now uh, thinking that the whole place has been completely renovated. They've completely um, knocked down walls. Looks sounds like from what, from what I can see on the images on on the internet as well, they've completely knocked down walls. It's it's a it's a place of uh, top class food, I believe. Like there's there's food halls. There's uh, not so much uh, all you can eat places. I don't think now. But it's completely, yeah, it's completely renovated. It's different to how it used to be. Now, when I looked at the other clubs as well, Club Auburn, remember? I looked at Club Auburn. Uh, and I was about to look at another place in Blacktown called the Blacktown RSL Club. It's not Blacktown RSL Club anymore. It's Club Blacktown. And I made another phone call during the course of the week. I made another phone call, I think it was Thursday, Friday, during the week. Uh, just before, uh, uh, between the time I finished work, so it was a break time, and um, I rang, I rang the guy. He seemed pretty friendly there, and I said, "You know what's happened? I've seen completely different images of um, Blacktown RSL Club." Well, he said they're known as um, Club Blacktown now, and they've completely renovated it. It's more kids friendly, and uh, they have a like a kids place where they can play and things like that, and it's. There's also more food varieties there. And uh, there's no all-you-can-eat place there anymore. There used to be an all-you-can-eat place there. But that's gone as well. So uh, all these all-you-can-eat places are completely gone. And there's all these different restaurants there. There's also there's there's some gaming machines there as well, there as well. So uh, I'm, like, I'm thinking, what does it look like? What does it look like now um, compared to my memory? Because... The memory is still is there, and um, I'm thinking they they must have completely renovated the whole place. So all these places have been renovated. Um, shopping centres been renovated all over the place as well. It's quite um, amazing, you know, how many places have gone for all these changes. So um, now I'm thinking it's probably not worth going there to record anything um, or make any. Um, comparisons between the video of Love Thy Neighbour in Australia and uh, you know the bars at um, Blacktown R uh, RSL or even Workers Club because it's not going to make a difference so um, there's me thinking wow I've looked at these places and um, I will also on one episode take you through to Blacktown uh, there's a few little places there. Uh, <laughs> there's a few little places there I can take you through to um, in relation to the TV show as well. So I will do that. Take you through to Blacktown and also take you t through to. I'll split the TV. I'll split. I'll split the show in two, so you can see the Blacktown RSL Club, and the Blacktown Workers Club. I think they've gone through a name change. Um, so when I was speaking to the guy, I said, look, I am right in saying that it's a people's club and it's owned by the people. It's not, you know, it um, stands for Return Service League. So it means that some, like these people, or these elderly people have come back from the war and uh, these, these are people that have come back from the war and they've built like a, a club. 
So Blacktown, one of the one of the really old clubs is Blacktown. Uh, so that go, that dates back years. Um, it's something that you do have to do your research and find out. But that is really important information there, just to have a look at these. I've got to thank all the all the people that were involved. In, they weren't actually on the videos, but the people that I had a talk with, and um, also um, I, that was the people that I had a talk with on at the hotels. So thank you to those people. Um, and I showed them the video footage of Love Thy Neighbour as well to the famous YouTube presenter, providing all that information on that video and sh going through place, you know, piece by piece, you know, all of the areas of the Auburn RSL club. And my eyes were just <laughs> glued to the screen, just trying to find the, the real clue I found that the real clue that that made me think, look, this has got to be it, uh, are the bars. And um, if you have a look underneath the bars, um, you can see some paintwork. Um, and you can see the paintwork that was there most recently. And on the actual walls, you can see some uh, things that have been removed. And under that was the was that green colour. So I know there's a lot of places with that green colour paint, but um, that gave me some more clues and I thought, look, this could be either filmed here at the um, Auburn uh, RSL Club or here at the Blacktown uh, Workers Club. So I, I was thinking which one it could have been. Now, uh, let me take you through to the Blacktown Workers Club. Club Blacktown. And what we thought was Marley Engineering in Wattle Street. Blacktown. Um, and um, to the famous YouTube um, 